communication service providers are striving to become digital service providers. So it makes sense for telcos these days to have a top level digital executive. So I'm talking today with Harmin Mehta, who joined BT as Chief Digital and Innovation Officer earlier this year about her role. So uh, Harmin, thanks very much for joining us today. Uh, what does your role entail? What does BT's Chief Digital and Innovation Officer do on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, basically bring about a whole lot of um, digital transformation and digital revolution within the company, um, leading, you know, building and leading the digital channels for all the businesses that we have here, an entire ecosystem, building more um, platforms and bringing that whole platform thinking um, into a into a telco play, um, as well as trying to see what are the strengths and assets that we have within the organization and what new services and new revenue streams we can build on top of those as well. So, um, you know, it's a um, I think it's a it's a fantastic role because you get to see everything and anything in the organization um, across all the businesses and um, at the same time make a real impact on the today and the tomorrow of the company and as well as build new opportunities for day after tomorrow. And how does that work alongside other executive roles, particularly the CTO office? Is there clear demarcation? Uh, the CTO function and um, you know Howard's organization, they basically build and run the networks that um, that you know all telecoms run on. So um, that core asset, which is a, a, a very integral part of the organization and basically uh, the fundamental products that we, we sell on the telecom side are built on top of our network. And that's what the CTO organization runs. Um, and then the rest of the, um, the technology stack that actually brings those services and products to life, takes them to the customers, building of the digital channels, running of those. Um, as well as, you know, bringing the whole platform thinking and how to build almost new services um, and like an OTT play on top of the network, which, uh, you know, many others do and, and um, get good revenue out of it and telecoms trying to do that themselves. I think that all falls in the, in the digital remit. And why do operators such as BT need a chief digital officer these days? What's driving the need for this specific role? And is digital transformation a useful term to use in this context? Well, um, I mean, digital is all about bringing the, you know, bringing the entire thinking around um, products as well as platforms and together with design and engineering and really bringing them uh, bringing them into life. Um, uh, is transformation a useful term? Um, I would say it, it brings out a lot of emotions and a lot of people, but um, it, if I look at it candidly, it truly is a transformation. It's almost like, um, you know, a lot of the industries, every few years, you have to reinvent yourself to keep up um, pace with the rest of the economy, rest of the industry, as well as, um, you know, what's happening around. And I think Telecom has always been a very technology-driven um, industry, especially, you know, even the core network domain is very technology-driven, but taking it to a different level and what the, you know, the revolution that has happened in the rest of the, the world and the rest of the industries um, and a lot of the services that we consume as consumers today and as enterprises today, they're actually fueled by, um, you know, the telecom services underneath in the last couple of years and the whole pandemic and the lockdowns and they have more than brought that to life. And I think this is really about seeing that as a lot of our customers are digitizing their lives and uh, enterprises who are also our customers are digitizing themselves, um, how we can A, enable that uh, and B, also bring about that same revolution internally. So from if you look at it from my lens very very relevant in fact could not be more relevant than at this point in time um and vis a -vis, you know why needed in in telcos well telcos are equally product organizations um and except for our network products there are a lot more solutions that we can build on top of that and in order to build those products and bring about that you know it's a and make it even more of a kind of a 
technology-led organization and as we become a more digital communications company and a tech company, I mean, yes, this is one of the pivotal areas that actually helps bring about that transformation. Look at all the industries around us and what's driving the differentiation between one company and the other. At the end of the day, it is the technology that they use. Um, and the, you know, the power of that combined with the power of the products and how to bring about um, you know, the distribution of those as well. But each one of these elements, the creation of the product, the um, bringing the product through the digital channels and the distribution of those, everything is powered by technology. So I think of, it's a great world that we live in. And what are the biggest challenges you face in your job? Are they technical, cultural, operational? I think a mix of all three. Um, I mean, the reality is that, um, you know, BT has, a, has probably one of the most envious histories in the, in the industry. I mean, 175 years of a very rich heritage um, of, you know, literally connecting people um, and being in communications from various different forms. And as that has evolved over these decades, um, so has our, our, our portfolio. But I think along with that rich history also comes, um, you know, a lot of legacy, a legacy of, um, of, of, of systems, a legacy of uh, the complexity that grows up over uh, so many years. And it comes from um, acquisitions and mergers and, and, and divestitures. Each one of those adds more and more complexity as well. So there is, there is a lot of legacy um, to be dealt with, especially on the technology side. Um, there is also a little bit of that uh, uh, legacy thinking in parts of the organization. And I think that cultural impact has to be part of that revolution. We've got to find a way of carrying a lot of um, our colleagues and people along uh, as well. But at the same time, it is um, there are some of these complexities that have been created. Those complexities could be complexity of thought, complexity of process, complexity of technology. And a lot of that has to change. Um, and I think uh, bringing about that change is um, you just have to just keep doing it. And, you know, sometimes it takes some, you have to be a little bit more drastic and disruptive in order to bring about that change. In some cases, um, it's about, um, you know, doing it much more through influence. So every tactic is, you know, that needs to be used um, is um, makes it very relevant on what is the right way to bring about that cultural transformation, people transformation, technology transformation. Um, it's a blend of everything. How does BT's relationships with the public cloud companies fit in here? Uh, and given that BT has its own private network cloud, how do you see these platforms being used to fulfill BT's digital strategy? See, um, Ray, as you know, a lot of the public cloud companies, they've invested a lot in building some really rich feature sets which make it much easier for organizations to uh, embrace that technology and, and truly transform and it changes the focus i mean building tech for tech is not what we are here for we are here to use technology to build the right experiences for our customers and for our businesses as well and for our own colleagues and, and internally within the organization and as we do that it makes it you know, it makes it easier when we are embracing a lot of these new tech solutions. And the public cloud is a very big part of our transformation. I mean, there is a lot of, um, you know, almost all of future BT is going to run on the cloud. And a big part of that is going to be on the public cloud as well. Um, and I think um, that um, uh, embracing of the public cloud is embedded into the transformation um, as well. So you will actually see us work very closely with them. There are lots of opportunities. It's actually a 360 relationship. We Connectivity is a big part of um, the services that these public clouds uh, provide as well. So there is a partnership there. Um, us embracing uh, a lot of the cloud creates us, you know, a, a, a second angle. And then, of course, there are some products which we can jointly um, take to market. And, um, you know, our enterprise and our global businesses build a lot of services on top of those products to really help bind a multi-cloud environment um, seamlessly for our customers. And I think there is a lot of value in, in, in that as well. So it's a very 360 degree 
relationship with um, with at least the large hyperscalers. What major changes would you like to see in the telecoms industry in the next five years that would help you with your plans and your goals? I think as an industry, um, you know, we've got to be, um, I think we're we're learning to be a lot more customer focused. And again, the last couple of years have really accelerated that. So would love to see even, even more of that. Um, I think today's technology and tomorrow's technology, and if you take the power of AI and, and, and you know, using the data and um, uh, as well as machine learning and all of that to really understand the customers, predict problems before they happen, solve them before the customers even realize that something has, has gone wrong, um, as well as using that for bettering our own services constantly, doing a lot of hyper um, localization as well as uh, hyper personalizations for our customers. I think all of these things are going to create a, a very different uh, telecommunications experience and much more of a digital communications experience for our customers. And I think the more relevant all of these things are in their lives, um, the more relevant it becomes for us to invest um, in all of these things. And at the same time, there is a lot of trust that uh, customers put in us. And I think for um, you know the, the angles of privacy and security and everything around that is where telecoms are investing uh, immensely. And as an industry, um, you know, I would really like to see us champion that trust uh, really, really well. And I would say the third part is equally about, um, you know, we are in, we're in the heart of every home um, and how we can really use that to bring about even more services and build stronger ecosystems and deeper partnerships and, you know, really change the flavor of, of, of telcos to be not just selling their own products, but becoming much more of um, digital channels that can bring many other relevant products and solutions into the into the homes and into the offices of our customers i think there's an awful lot that can be done i mean if you look at it the um it took um it took many other companies other than telcos to actually invent um you know the revolution in mobile phones or operating systems on those mobile phones and and all of that and whereas it's all integrated into a, a telecom play um, so I think this generation um, and this era of telecommunications is really about telcos taking, um, you know, a more innovative approach and seeing how we can really leverage our own core strengths and help influence um, other industries as well as um, other verticals um, that can actually come out of the adjacencies from telecommunications and whether it is much more what we can do in a healthcare space or much more we can do with um, um, drones and the unmanned vehicle space, um, you know, creating different modes of, um, of connectivity for the future, um, as well as the whole IoT and, you know, from smart cities to smart homes, there's a whole lot of play um, that is just literally waiting for us to revolutionize. Um, so I, as, I, as I look towards the future, it, you know, the opportunity of what we can do is, is, is fantastic and wonderful. Uh, what kind of role will open APIs and open platforms play here? I mean, will that enable third party developers to be able to come in and enhance the service relationship and the service portfolio? Absolutely. In fact, one of the principles that we're looking to drive is every, we're, instead of just focusing on products and projects, we are now, you know, focusing a lot more time on building robust platforms which are highly digital in nature and actually have that plug and play nature where we're able to take a lot of producers out there, not only of you know us as a producer, but other products produced by others and provide uh, the platform that brings those um, into the homes and offices of all our customers. Um, and as you do that, a big part of that is that open ecosystem. Um, and it, you know, almost all platforms that we are now developing are going to have developer portals so startups and other developers can actually embrace of all of those features and technologies as well and you know bring about growth in their own companies there's an entire ecosystem we're building around startups and startup accelerators to make it easier for startups to work with organizations like bt and not get caught up in our own um, you know our own complexity and bureaucracy and actually make 
um, you know, BT, the organization that they want to partner up with. And a lot of partners want to partner up with because it is a route to their growth um, as well. And I think that can only happen by building very open platforms, very open ecosystems that are plug and play, makes it easier for companies to work with you. And, you know, those digital interfaces are the ones that bind the organizations together, um, you know, rather than any other complexity of doing business. Well, that's a very positive note to end on, Harmeen. It's all about the symbiotic relationships. Uh, thanks very much for joining us today and sharing your insights and hope to speak to you again soon. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ray, and thanks for having me. It was great talking to you. Thank <laughs> you.